Welcome to the Books of the Bible Game, where you try to decide whether a book from the Bible is in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Let's give the Books of the Bible wheel a spin. The first book is the Book of Ruth. If you think the Book of Ruth is in the Old Testament, then clap your hands. If you think the Book of Ruth is in the New Testament, then make a bird noise. If you were clapping your hands, then you were right. The Book of Ruth is in the Old Testament. Let's give the Books of the Bible wheel another spin. It looks like this time the wheel landed on 1st and 2nd Timothy. If you think these books are in the Old Testament, wiggle your nose. If you think they're in the New Testament, pull on your ear. If you're pulling on your ear, then you're right. The books of 1st and 2nd Timothy are in the New Testament. Let's spin the wheel again. This time, the books of the Bible wheel landed on the Book of Judges. If you think the Book of Judges is in the Old Testament, then stick out your tongue. If you think the Book of Judges is in the New Testament, then scratch your head. If you were sticking out your tongue, then you were right this time. Judges is in the Old Testament. Let's see what book the wheel lands on next. It looks like this time, it's the book of Proverbs. If you think the book of Proverbs is an Old Testament book, then make a funny face. If you think it's a New Testament book, then rub your belly. If you were making a funny face, then you're right. The book of Proverbs is in the Old Testament. Let's spin the wheel one more time. The last book that the books of the Bible wheel landed on is Hebrews. If you think Hebrews is in the Old Testament, touch your nose. If you think the book of Hebrews is in the New Testament, roar like a lion. If you roared like a lion, then you are correct. The book of Hebrews is in the New Testament. Thanks for playing the Books of the Bible game. Come and play again soon. Make a joyful noise
Lovers. Are you guys ready to rock it out for Jesus? Thank you for joining me. I'm Sister Cynthia. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we can study the word together. Let's have a prayer and get started. Dear Heavenly Father, 
we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you've given us. We thank you for your word. And your word says that we should study your word so that we can be workmen that don't need to be ashamed. And you promised in your word that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we thank you for that. And I ask you to supply our need for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and revelation. And I ask you to bless each student, Father, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name, amen. So our lesson today is called a temporary plan. We're going to still be going along with our types and shadows and symbols and how Jesus can be seen throughout the Bible. And it also reminds us of the scarlet thread. So what does type and shadow mean? Do you remember it from the previous lessons? Have you been taking notes? I hope so. We need to take notes so that we can keep track of where we're going with this lesson. And you can teach it to someone else. You could teach it to your little brother or your little sister. But a type and shadow is a symbol or something uh, cloudy that reminds us or looks toward Jesus. It's a symbol of Jesus. So it's, you could see Jesus in Genesis. You can see Genesis, Jesus in Exodus, okay? So on our next slide, our power verse is, it's, it, is, it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away the sins. And that's Hebrew 10.4. So throughout all of these lessons, no matter who's teaching, we want you to remember that. And if you can memorize that scripture, it would be great. What does it mean to be temporary? Do you know? Temporary is something that's not permanent. And the definition is lasting for only a limited period of time. Think about it like spring break, your summer break, that 50% sale at the store that you love or on your game or your game console, when it goes on sale, those are temporary things. They come and they go and they're for a limited time. So God has made a temporary plan. We talk, what's a plan? Do you ever make plans? I make plans. Have you made plans to do your homework, do your housework, meet up with your friends? If you're playing an instrument, do you make plans to practice? What about sports? Are you making plans to practice so that you can be the best? So we make plans. What's our lesson title again? A temporary plan. On our next slide, you might recognize this picture. I love the movie Home Alone. When I was told what this lesson was going to be about, I thought about Kevin McAllister. Kevin, I love that movie. I think I watched it in the last few months. I don't have to wait till Christmas to watch that movie. But Kevin is accidentally left at home alone, and he's in your age group. He wasn't afraid. He didn't cry. He was actually happy the family was gone because he has older siblings. Maybe you do too. He ate everything he wanted. He jumped in his parents' bed. He went in his brother's, big brother's room where he was forbidden to go. Now, don't you do any of those things, but it's a great movie. And he made a plan. And I can see Kevin, and you can see him too, laying out that plan on the desk. He's determined to protect his home. So he devises a plan to protect his home from the bad guys. And I can see him spreading out that plan on the desk and, and, sh and seeing everything that he's going to do. And if you've seen the movie, maybe you have a favorite part. Maybe it's the ice on the stairs or uh, the nails and the broken uh, Christmas ornaments that the bad guy steps on with his bare foot. Doesn't that make you think that hurt? But Kevin had a plan. I can see Moses laying out his plan and God laying out the plan for Moses of what he wanted for the children of Israel. On our next slide, you know that guy? Who is that? That's Moses. Do you remember Moses? Sure you do. Moses is a great leader who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, brought them out of slavery, heading for the promised land. And he had a staff. With that staff that you see there in that picture, he opened the Red Sea. It was a miracle. He's standing there. The, the, the Red Sea was in front of them. The Egyptian army was behind them. They were crying and screaming and blaming Moses for every bad thing that happened in their lives. And God told him, stop belly aching. Use your rod. Use what I gave you. He opened the Red Sea. They walked across on dry land, and they were saved. And the Egyptian army tried to do the same thing, and we know they drowned. So we know who Moses is. When they got across the Red Sea, it wasn't like things are now. There's no Holiday Inn. There's no Hyatt Place. There's no Airbnb. 
no bed and breakfast. They had nowhere to live, so they were nomads. That's a new word, perhaps, or maybe you knew that word already, nomad. It's the person who travels, and they don't have a permanent home to live in. So they were nomads. And you'll see the tents there. Have you ever lived in a tent? They lived in tents, so that in the morning, when it's time to start traveling again, you just fold up the tent and you're ready to go. Have you ever stayed in a tent? Maybe Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Indian Guides? Do they still have Indian Guides? I don't know, but they were nomads, so we want to remember that. Now let's get back to Moses. So, where did Moses live? Do you think Moses had a, um, a penthouse on Lakeshore Drive or a tiny house or uh, that he was living in a lakeside resort? No, Moses lived in a tent too. And while he was in his tent, he spent time fellowshipping with God, listening to God, listening for the next uh, assignment and listening for this temporary plan. And the plan that God had for him involved blood and involved symbols and it involved all these types and shadows that we're talking about that really represent what Jesus would do to finally be our savior. Now, since we're talking about Moses fellowshipping with God and spending time uh, with God, our next slide is a scripture that we are well familiar with at this church. It's Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Moses spent time with God so that his faith could be built up. Remember, we've had lessons that said uh, we've been given a measure of faith. That measure of faith grows. And when it grows, it grows because we fellowship with God. So you make sure that you're spending time reading the word, hearing the word. You can hear it on YouTube. You can hear it uh, on, on uh, the church's website. Dr. Winston speaks the word or, or and praying. And if you uh, have a prayer language, you can pray in tongues or you can pray in your understanding. So just like Moses, get in that information for his purpose and the plan from God. You can get your information for your purpose and your plan because he does have a plan for you. And that always leads us to our next slide, which is one of our favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11 guarantees you what God thinks about you. He says he has a good plan for you, not evil. When bad things are happening, it's not God doing it. It's the enemy. And we have to stand against him. And with our faith, we can stand against him. But God says he wants to give us a future and a hope. But there are things that can get in the way of God's plan because he needs our cooperation. He needs a man, he needs a human. He made them male and female, so we're, we're all man, humankind. So he needs our help, but sin can get in the way. Sin is very, a very serious issue with God. He doesn't play with sin. He hates sin, and we should hate it too. Now, he doesn't hate people. He loves people, that's why he sent Jesus. But he, he hates the things that the devil can do to them when they sin. And we don't want to put ourselves out there. We don't want to be out there allowing the devil to use us or to, to mess up our lives. And we know from our lessons, Ezekiel 18.4 says, a person who sins is the one who dies. And we don't want death. You've heard this one before. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 6.23. So we're happy about that because we know that Jesus is our gift and, and we have eternal life. But people who don't, they have wages. You know what wages are? Wages are what you get paid for the work you do. So we don't want to get the wages of sin, which is death. We want life. And that's what Jesus wanted. On our next slide, John 10:10, 10, 10, where Jesus says that he wants us to have life and life more abundantly. He doesn't want us to have what the, what the enemy is trying to give us. All right, you still with me? So... Let's see if we've missed anything. Okay, back during that time, the reason that sin is so, so uh, a, such a serious issue with, G, with God is because sin separates us from God. When we sin, we can't, <laughs> when we sin, he can't communicate with us. And back during Moses' time, God wasn't communicating with them. You remember back in, in the Garden of Eden before Adam sinned, it said that he would meet with God in the cool of the day. He could talk to them. They were best friends. They were buddies. They, knew, they would have a good conversation. But then when he sinned, that separated him from God. So during Moses' time, they couldn't talk to God. They couldn't communicate with God. So God would talk to certain people. He talked to Abraham. He talked to Moses. So 
he talked to Moses and he gave him the temporary plan. And that's where we've been going this whole time. The temporary plan was a tabernacle. And on our final slide, you see the tabernacle. That's what this was all about. He wanted, God wanted to get close to his people. So he devised a temporary plan that would allow them to worship him, to sacrifice animals, to, to cover their sins, to atone for their sins, and allow them to be able to get close to God. And that's what we want, right? We want to be close to God because God loves us and he cares about us and he protects us. So if there were three things that we want to remember about this lesson, is that God has a good plan. He always has a good plan for you. He's only doing good things to you. He's not a bad God today and a good God tomorrow. He's good every day. He needs us. He needs a man to take care of the plan like he needed Moses. He needs humankind. You're a human, male or female. He can use you, and he can use you to be a blessing to other people. And he can use you for the big plan, which is the plan of redemption. All right? And sometimes he uses temporary plans. And this tabernacle was the temporary plan. All right? So I hope that you got something out of that lesson. And I hope that you're watching and you already know Jesus. But if you don't know Jesus and he's not your Lord and your personal Savior, we can pray right now, and you, you can ask him into your heart, and you can be saved, and you can take part in all of the wonderful things that he has for us, all the promises of God. When you're studying your Bible, Bible there are hundreds and hundreds of promises, things that he wants for you, things he wants to give you, okay? So pray with me. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior, repeat after me. Father, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. I ask you to forgive me, Lord, and I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for my sins. On the third day, he rose again. Father, come, come into my life. Live your life in me and through me. I want all that Jesus has paid for, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer with me, your life has changed. You may not feel any different, but your spirit has changed. Your spirit has been recreated. Tell your mother or your father or your sister or your brother what's happened to you so they can help you to study the word and to learn more about the Lord. I'm glad that you were with me here today. Thank you for coming, and I look forward to seeing you again. Sure.